Digging up next door. Thought the problem's supposed to be coming from there. Well, the fella says he thinks there might be some old disused drain down there, so they're gonna have to trace it. In mean, lovely garden. And you thought I made a mess last week? Well, at least we're finally gonna get this left sorted, eh? When do you think they'll start here? I don't know. Maybe we'll be all right if they might not have to dig here. No, we can't stand around here all day waiting to find out. Let's just start packing, just in case. I'm going now. See you later. All right, bye, love. Where's she going? It's cool. She can't. What was I supposed to tell her? I'll worry about that later. Come on, let's just get that packing over with. <sighs> so, what happened between you and Kevin last night once we got off, eh? He's so lovely. I've never been out with anyone like that before. He just seems different from most fellas. He listens. So, uh, did anything, you know, happen? It was all face taste. <gasps> well, that's never stopped you before. Hey, what are you saying? So you didn't even stop? <laughs> well, sort of. What do you mean, sort of? He kissed me on the cheek when he dropped me off. Oh, isn't that romantic? I've told you he's not like all the other fellas. He's a real old-fashioned gentleman. Oh, I'm just going to knock at yours. Oh, you've missed Ali. He's already left. No, I wasn't calling for late. I just wanted to invite you to a surprise birthday party for Zimbad. All right, when? Straight after school at hours. Oh, don't be too late, though, because there's going to be some food. I feel dead sorry for him. Everyone's forgotten. Do you think mm. you'll be able to make it? Am I invited? Yeah, Mother Maria. And I will bring a bottle. Oh, don't say anything to my mum with Zimbad, though. It's a surprise. I'm already love your secret safe with us. Mm. Okay. See you later, then. Bye. See, See you. Hello. Hey, Mr. Dixon. Ah, uh, morning, love. How do you fancy coming to a party tonight? Why, what's the occasion? It's a surprise birthday party for Simbad later today at ours. Yeah, I think we can manage that. Very nice of you. Brilliant. And bring a bottle if you can. Oh, and mention it to the other neighbours as well if you see them. But make sure nobody says anything to my mum or Simbad. <laughs> OK, fair enough. Right, well, uh, see you later then, eh? Thanks for the invite. See ya. ta -da. Hey, Eddie. What's all the noise, mate? Drainage experts. We've got a flood at the back of ours and it's trying to work out where it's coming from. All right, Maxie. What's that noise? I was just saying we've had a flood at the back of ours. What kind of flood? Well, that's what they're trying to find out. I can't see the state we've made of our back garden. Driving poor Rosie up the wall, this back garden was a pride and joy. Good grief! Blue Are they going to clear all this mess up here when they're finished? I should bloody well hope so, the price that's charging. So, what's your professional opinion on this, then, Maxie? Well, it's difficult to say. I mean, it could be a whole variety of things. I, now, I'm sure these chaps have got a good idea what the problem is. I mean, it could be a, an old capped-off train been collecting with water and now it's leaking. Yeah, well, that's what the fellas were saying. It's just trying to find out where. If they don't find anything here, they're going to start digging up next door. What an ass. Oh, no, no, you're all right, mate. We reckon it's coming from the jaw dashes. Well, at the speed this thing's going, it should only be a matter of time before we find out for sure. This is ridiculous. We can't expect to get away with it. We don't even know where we're going. Um, I've been thinking. I reckon we should go back to Ireland. Ireland? Well, I know it's hardly Australia, but it's a big enough place, and we could lie low just until we know what's happening. Right, well, Ireland it is, then. All right, well, you go and pick Rachel up from school. I'll go get the rest of the money out the bank. Just make sure that you're ready by the time I get back, and keep an eye on that lot. How's it going, lads? All done? Oh, great. Oh, my God, you're getting all that junk shifted. You'll be able to make a start on this now. Got us a little fence put under the house. Oh, I don't think so. I haven't got the time to put up fences. I'm due at the shop any minute now. Well, uh, I think that's where you might be wrong, cos I rang Jackie Corker before and she said she can cope on her own, so you can get cracking on it today. Can I now? Well, if we have a little fence, it'll stop dogs doing the business on the front. I suppose so. 
Right, lads. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, lad. Hello, son. And to what do we owe this pleasure? Well, I just thought I'd bring this around. It's the most warm present for you. Oh, that's nice. Thanks a lot. You shouldn't be doing this, you know. You can't afford it. Well, I can now. How do you mean? Are you on that job I went for? Yeah. I got it. Found out this morning. Oh, well done. Oh, yeah. Great, Michael. I'm really proud of you. Well done. You deserve it. That's fine. Kettle on. All right, well. Well, I appreciate you coming around and letting me know. Well, you are my dad, aren't you? Yeah. Look, Mike, I know you and our Jackie have had a bad time a bit lately. Not with your mum going and everything, but... Whatever happens, son, I'll always be your dad, you know. Yeah. And you and our Jackie will always be welcome round here. It's as much your home as it is ours. Nice one, Dad. Must seem weird to you, though, eh? Me and Ben moving in here. Well, it's got nothing to do with me, has it? You sure you don't mind? I wouldn't have come round with a present and a card if I did, would I? No. <laughs> anyway, up the workers, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Right, I think that's everything. We'll just have to leave the rest behind. Oh, I can't believe this is happening. Well, try and be positive. For all we know, they might not even find the body. We might be able to come back in a few days. No, I just know this is it, this is the end. I don't know why I didn't hand myself over to the police at the beginning. I mean, how did I ever convince myself that we could get away with all this? What have I done to you all? You haven't done anything. I have. What about your future at university? What about Rachel? She's got a GCSEs coming up this year. I've... I've ruined everything. Mama, how many times do I have to tell you that we have no choice? You're not the only one up to your eyes in all this. Me and Simba could go to prison as well. And then what will happen to Rachel? We've got to get away. It's our only option. Oh, Beth, I'm so sorry about come on, all please, this. please, stop apologising. Now, come on. I've got to go and get Rachel. I've got to have everything ready for when Simba comes. What are we going to tell her? I don't know. I think something on the way. Just come on. Yeah. Right. OK. Yeah. Morning, man. Did you have a nice holiday? It's fine, thanks. Hey, what do you think of our new fence? Should look lovely when it's done. Yeah, bye. Is that cheese in such a rush for? Oh, no, no. All right, Maxie. Morning. What's this? What's it look like? Fence. It was my idea. Well, you can't put up a fence. Why not? Because the whole point of living on a close that's open plan is that it's open plan. Oh, it just gives the place a bit of variety, cheers it up. Have you had planning permission for this? For a little fence? Be soft. Well, don't say I didn't warn you when they asked you to take it down. Someone got up the wrong side of the bed this morning. Yeah. Probably just jazz. Anyway, I'm going to ring a taxi. I need to pop into town for a few more bits. What's wrong with the bus? Oh, buses take forever. I told you. Find the little one around. Save us a fortune. Just off down to the restaurant. Right, I'm just going to club. I've got to reorganise the staff roster. Why? Bit of a problem, I'm afraid. Uh, Emma walked out last night. You what? I should have listened to you from the start. I mean, she really does have an attitude problem, and last night she overstepped the mark. I, I had a few words with her about letting in the wrong sort of clientele, and well, she just stormed out. Well, I thought she was really getting into it. That's why I promoted her. Well, don't worry. I mean, people like her ten a penny, and I'll find someone who can do the job and smile at the same time. I can't understand why she walked out, though, Max. Are you sure you didn't do nothing to upset her? Of course not. No, you take my word for it. We'd be better off without her. There you go, see you again. Thank you, thank you very much. All right. All right, Max, do you want the good news or the bad news? I don't like the sound of this. Go on, I'll be predictable, I'll have the bad news first. Well, I've come to hand in me notice. Are oh, you kidding me, Mike? No, I got that job. Oh, well, that's, that's great. I am made up for you. Hardly good news for me, though, is it? I'm going to be really stuck in there without you. Well, I think I've sorted that for you and all. Why would you mean? I have found the perfect part-time replacement. And who's there? Da da. You're really determined to install Sarah behind this couch, aren't you? Oh, look, Mick, I know I had a few problems the last time I was working here, but most of that was because I couldn't find a babysitter for Rebecca. You know how hard it is with kids on your own. And now she's on the clothes, she's sorted. I mean, Carl has Rebecca, so do Rosie and Eddie. And everything went OK when I covered for Mike last week. And like you said, Mick, you're going to be stuck otherwise. All right, all right. 
can start Monday. Honest? Oh, Mick, I made up. Thanks very much. It's your last chance, though, sir. I promise I won't let you down this time. I'll see you on Monday. Nice offer asking for us. Well, thank Mick, not me. Yeah, but you never would have given me a job if you hadn't asked. It's really appreciated. That's a bit risky around here, don't you think? We own Carl's seen us and anyone else for that matter. I wish we'd have told him right from the beginning. I mean, the longer we leave, the harder it gets. But, Ma, I can't say I'm looking forward to the day when he does find out. Hey, you'll have to let me take you off for a drink tonight. Well, we're saying thanks. Yeah, well, if you insist. It's a date, then. Um, I'd better get off. How long has this been going on? Not long. So I can't have anything when he finds out. Why are you going to tell him? Your life's your own love. You're both free agents now. But he's not going to like it when he does find out you've seen his best mate. And he can't expect to keep it a secret forever. We've got to go away for a few days. What do you mean? I know it's all a bit sudden, and we've got no choice. Mum, what's Rachel, happened? Rachel, we'll explain it when we get home. Now, come on, we can't waste any more time. It's nothing to worry about, love. Everything will be all right. So you can tell me what all this is about. Well, um, <clears throat> the thing is, love, uh, you know I owed Mr. Maguire some money. Yeah, but I thought you paid all that back. No, uh, not all of it. And uh, the thing is, it's quite a lot. I haven't mentioned it before because I didn't want to worry you. So why are we going away? Because things have changed. He threatened Mum and said that if she didn't have the money by today, then we'd end up regretting it. Well, can't you go to the police? Well, I know that would be the right thing to do, but when you're dealing with the likes of Mr. Maguire, it isn't always that easy. I I'm frightened, Rachel. I know what he's capable of. Well, I'm not running away. I'm not scared of him, Mum. Rachel, you don't understand. He's dangerous. He wouldn't think twice about hurting any of us. Where are we going? Back to Ireland. Well, Mum said you liked it then. You can just look at it as another holiday, only this time I'll be with you. When? As soon as Simba gets back, he should be here any minute. But we can! But why not? Because... Well, because I've arranged a surprise birthday party for Simbad. I've invited loads of people. Look, and I've got crisps and cake and everything. I was going to do some sandwiches and sausage rolls. I'm sorry to mess up all your plans. That's really thoughtful of you. Look, we'll have it as soon as we get back, I promise. Well, I'll have to go and tell people it's been cancelled. No, you can't. The least people know, the better. I'm sorry, love, I really am, but we've got no choice. Right, well... Better go and pack a few of my things and Anna. Oh, I feel terrible lying to her. Well, you know it's even worse, don't you? I've forgotten Simba's birthday. There you go. What do you think? Oh, Ron, it's lovely. Hey, we'll be the talk of the clothes. So, what have you been spending our dosh on this time? Health food. Oh, Bev. What are you spending your money on all that rubbish for? It's not rubbish. But we've got our own shop round the corner, love. Why do you want to pay fancy prices when we can get things at cost? Remember what I said yesterday, Ron? I only want what's best for our Josh's health from now on. If it's good enough for Pat Farnham's kid, it's good enough for him. Yeah, well, don't go thinking that I'm going to be eating any of that rubbish. Well, if you want to live on egg and chips for the rest of your life, that's up to you. Just don't expect me to cook them for you. All right, Sin. Happy birthday, mate. How did you know? Oh, uh. Little Dicky Bear told me. Anything special planned? No, just a quiet night in, you know. 
That's what he thinks. All right, Sinbad. All right, Seth. The good news is they found out what's causing the problem. And? Well, apparently it's some old pipe. Max Farnham was right. They reckon it's been lying down there, rotting away for years, well before these houses were built. They didn't have a clue it was there. It's just been capped off and left. But now it looks like it's cracked. And what's the bad news? Well, they followed it along our garden and couldn't find the leak. So it's definitely coming from yours. They've just started on your garden now. What? They're in ours now? Yeah, I'm afraid so. I, uh, hope you managed to shift that stuff you were telling me about. Oh, my God. What the hell's Sinbad? Digging. Yeah, I know, I know. We'll just try to stay calm. I'm here now. Have you sorted everything out? Yeah, we'd better get moving because the ferry leaves in a couple of hours. Oh, well, I'll call the cab. Rachel, we're going now. I've packed everything you're going to need. Yeah. Oh, but Kenny Maguire shouldn't be allowed to get away with this. What's Kenny Maguire got to do with this? We've told Rachel all about Kenny Maguire being after us. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, hello. Can I have a taxi, please, to Ten Brookside Close, Manor Park? Yeah, well, can you make it as soon as possible? Thanks. OK, bye. Five minutes. Have you finished with this, Mo? Yeah, talk, babe. Going out tonight? Yeah, Carl's having Becca. That'll be my care, I'll get it. I doubt Sarah will be seeing this new fella of his. Well, in all fairness, love, she is young, free and single. She might be young and single, but she's certainly not free. She's got a little girl to think about. Or have you forgotten at all? Oh! Hey, Kev. Hello. Eddie, this is Kev. Kev, this is Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Nice to meet you. You right, mate? Fancy a cup of Kev? Oh, I'd love one, too. Or as lagers, if you prefer a bevy. No, I prefer a cup of tea. I don't drink. So, uh, how did you two meet, then? Well, sort of through Rosie, really. You know, through the darts team and that. I'll have a lager. May as well get into the party spirit. I think I'll join you. It's a lovely house you got here. Thanks. Right then. I suppose we better go and get changed. Hey, should we go and sit through there? It's more comfy. I'll uh, put a bit of Barry Manilow on, get into the party mood before next door's surprise, eh? What do you make of it, eh? Seems all right, but I don't have to go out with him, do I? Oh, thank God I almost found someone decent for a change. I'm quite looking forward to this party now. She'll be laughing. Well, I'm not sure whether next door will be in the mood for laughing when they see the mess that lot are going to make of their garden. <laughs> Bye to Lee. Tell him where we'll be. We haven't got time, Ray. We're putting things fine as it is. Come on. Just think. When we moved in here, this was supposed to be our safe house. What a joke. Well, let's get away. You know what? It's a pity about Emmy, you know. I mean, these recommendations of his are really good. What do you think? Yeah, they're not bad. All the same, I would have appreciated you consulting me over this new summer menu idea first. I've come for my wages. What wages? You haven't paid me for Tuesday or the three hours I did yesterday. You've let me down. How have I? Yeah. I thought you were taking this job seriously. I even promoted you. I know, and I'm very grateful. But he was well out of order yesterday. Well, you would say that, wouldn't you? Look, I appreciate what kind of business you're trying to run here, but I don't think it's my job to turn people away because he doesn't like the look of them. He seemed all right to me. I was just trying to get on with my work and then he came over and sacked me. I thought you said she walked out. I did, but only after he tried to sack me for no reason. I was totally justified. Uh, listen, Emma, could you just go and wait downstairs for a minute while I have a private word with my partner?
So, Max, why exactly did you sack it, Emmy? I've told you, for letting in the wrong sort. And what exactly is the wrong sort? Well, that Rosie Banks and her sister, for a start, and Bev, to be precise. Well, I was never going to know what they were like. <laughs> I thought that was obvious. Look, Max, I think you're being a bit arse here. I mean, what if she took us to one of those tribunal things? We wouldn't have a leg to stand on. What about if she went to the papers? So what are you saying? You're going to overrule my decision? I'm just saying it's a bit petty to let someone like Emma go. Forgive me for thinking this, but is there some ulterior motive here? What do you mean? Well, you and her, you, uh, you seem to be very keen on keeping her. She's a good worker, Max, and we don't want any more strikes or anything on our hands, do we? Do us. Okay, mate. Okay, then. I'll speak to you later, mate. Sam? Hiya. In the party mood, then? Well, we were, but no one seems to be in. Oh. Yeah, we've been knocking for a few minutes now. Maybe this is their idea of a surprise party. There isn't one. Oh. <laughs> Do you reckon everything's all right, then? Oh, doesn't seem to be any sign of anyone. Well, why would you invite people around for a party, then go out? Maybe they found out you were coming. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind, but we went to the trouble of getting a babysitter and everything. It's all right, you can open up. It's not the poll tax bailiffs. Eh, <laughs> uh, you're knocking off now, mate? Yeah, see ya. <sighs> Look at her. Spend all week getting them down here, then they go and get off early without even sorting it. Hey, hey. All right, Mick. Didn't realise it was a street party. There's no one in. You sure? Looks like we all got dressed up for nothing, then. <sighs> so, uh, what's the score, then? Mick, you know Kevin, don't you? Yeah. Face looks familiar. He's the landlord at the Peacock. Oh, yeah, right. You sometimes come in on a Friday for the singles night, don't you? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Hey, occasionally, right? Hey, miss. Now you were going to be single night, so did I myself? Yes, thank you, Beverly. Oh, we're not going to get any answer from here. We might as well go back home, then. Well, it all seems a bit odd to me. If you think if we were going out, Rachel would have the decency to let us know. She's got a good excuse. Well, look, it seems a shame all this booze going to waste. Why don't we all pile back over to ours? Are you sure? Yeah, you have to excuse the mess, though. Oh, smash it. Yeah, we could have one of those decorating parties, couldn't we? You know, where you all help us to strip the walls. <laughs> no, thanks. I didn't get myself all glammed up to spend the night stripping. Oh, <laughs> the wallpaper, I mean. Well, it's a pity Simmer isn't here. It's his birthday after all, isn't it? Tell you that everything was going to be all right, but I can't. Oh, Simba, what's going to happen to us? Look, at least we've still got each other. Okay? Come on. Digging resumes on Monday at 8.30 with the first in a special week of five episodes. So remember, every day next week, Brookside at 8.30.
Mandy? Mandy? All right, love, I know you need time. I know I'll have to be patient. Don't worry. I won't give up. I knew you wouldn't give up on me. No, I'm very sorry. What have I done to you? Oh, I'm sorry. I want us to go back to the way that it was at the beginning. I know it was my fault that it all went wrong. Bloody people trying to tell me what to do. Confining me, blaming me. If you do, I'll kill you. Do you understand? I'll kill you, and I'll kill the girls. I'll kill us all! Hi, Mandy, love. Hi, Mandy, love. Hi, Mandy, love. Mandy? Mandy, love? Mandy? Can you hear me calling? Here, I can't stand it. Oh my God, let me go! Stop it! What's happened? I keep seeing him. I keep hearing him. Just keep your voice down. I can't keep him out of my mind. What's happening? Um, Mum's just a bit upset. Why well, can't she get out of her mind? M Maguire. Ah, uh, I'm all right, Rachel. Thanks. Uh, you can get ready for breakfast. Oh, this is so stupid running away. Why are we here? Look, there's nothing else we could do. Now. Just go and get dressed. Give you the knock for breakfast. So what happened? I just came back with the papers and she kicked off. Well, we're going to have to watch that cover and everything. Yeah, well, she's calmer now. Was there anything in the papers? No. I haven't had a chance to check them yet. Let's just hope for the best, OK? Just watching how these fellas were shaping. Hey, get them boots off before you come in here. Oh, look at me garden. I know. I told them the problem was next door. I don't know how Mandy George actually could just go away with all that going on. I wonder where they are. These workies will want to wear it if they find anything. Mm. Well, I haven't seen any of them. And I'll leave knock for Rachel this morning, no answer. Funny that they all got off with that party organised, isn't it? Mm. Hey, mustn't have paid the council tax. Well, whatever they are, they'll have the shock of their lives when they come back and see that mess. You feeling better now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, uh, I don't know what happened. Just got a bit panicky. Yeah, well, it's hardly the ideal holiday break, is it? Oh, God. Why did we come back here, of all places? That's just the quickest place, wasn't it? Yeah, but this is Trevor's country. I know it sounds stupid, but I keep on expecting to bump into him. Every time I hear the accent, I think I'm going to turn around and he'll be standing there. Yeah, well, I can forget about all that. There's nothing in these about a body being found. <laughs> they'll find him and they'll get us. Don't talk soft. Nobody knows we're here. And nobody here knows who we are. As far as anyone's concerned, we are just Mr and Mrs Todd on holiday with the kids. And no one's going to suspect anything unless we give them the opportunity. Mate. Maybe we should be sleeping in the same bed, then. What? We're going to act like man and wife. You just said. Mandy, nobody's going to come in and check if we're kipping together. Besides, I'm all right in the chair. Mm, cleaner might notice. Mand, I'm all right in the chair. Well, first, that's what you wanted, for us to sleep together. Yeah. But not now, not after Maguire. Going down to breakfast. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether I can go through with all this. I've just told her we've got to act like everything's fine. But it's not, is it? It's far from fine. Yeah, but we've got to keep things together because Rachel's getting more and more narky about being here. What's the point? We killed someone and we'll get caught. Mand, we're just here to make sure that things are okay. Give ourselves a little bit of breathing space, you know, time to work things out. 
He's right. Things could all blow over and we can go back home. What if it doesn't blow over? Well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Bev? Yeah? I wondered, could I have a word with you about the garden? Oh, I. Looking for some gardening tips, are we, eh? <laughs> I bet we've got you two dead jealous, haven't we? Well, actually, um... <laughs> well, now you mention it, um... I was just wondering if Ron could tone things down a little bit. What do you mean? Well, I, I don't know about you, but I think you must have got a bit carried away, what, uh, with the fence and the name and, uh... You're saying you don't like it? No, 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 not exactly. Well, I'm sorry, Max, but me and Ron don't tell you and Pat what to put in your front garden, so I think you're well out of order telling us what to do with ours. I mean, we're only trying to smarten the close up, you know, I mean, this is supposed to be a posh neighbourhood. See ya. Morning, Max. Uh, morning, David. Good news. Read the matter of canine excrement on the close and the obvious risk to the community of Toxicara. I am delighted to say I have a result. I, I beg your pardon? Corkill and that filthy hound of his. Oh, yes, yes. Talk of the devil. <laughs> the authorities are sending someone over today to hear my, or rather the community's case. With a bit of luck, it'll be the last we see of those two around here. Well, chance would be a fine thing. Listen, there isn't someone you can call out for all this lot, is there? I mean, is there any such thing as the bad taste police? Better get to work. I'll see you later. All right, bye. Uh, excuse me. Why, what have you done? Can I ask your business? I'm visiting a meet, OK? See how his holidays went, but he's not in. Then I thought I heard noises coming from around the back, so I'm going to investigate. OK, that enough for you? I see. Well, then I'm sure you won't mind being accompanied by a neighbour. We do have a neighbourhood watch scheme in this area, and I am an officially elected representative. Do what you like. Oh. Won't be long. We'll see you later. See ya. What's the score here? What's it look like? They've got to find the leak. Our place in the right mess because of this. All right, all right. Keep your flaming hair on, will you? Well, you don't need to be round here, do you? I've come to see me mate Sinbad, haven't I? He's not here. None of them are. No sign of them at all? Nah. They got back up the rolls, back about five minutes, and skedaddled again. They even invited us to a birthday party, but no-one showed. <sighs> no-one's seen him, eh? Very Agatha Christie, that, isn't it, eh? Cracker, come here, will you? Leave her. She'll probably find the leak quicker than those fellas. No closer to finding it, then? Nah. I think they're packing it in. They've got to get some other bit of equipment. Said if they don't get any joy here, they're going to start digging a bit more over that way. Well, if everything's under control here, I'll get back. Yeah, well, go on, then. Don't worry, me and Cracker will stand guard. Right. Well, I'll see you later, then, Eddie. See you, Dave. Mum? Yeah? Why can't I go and see Dad's family? What do you mean? We should be with our family if this Maguire's after us. It's better if we don't contact anyone we know. How long are we going to be here? As long as necessary. <sighs> so we got a beggar for dinner, then? I want to know when we can go back home. I mean, what about Lee and my other mates? No, we'll sort that out, Rachel. We are going back, aren't we? I don't have to go to a new school, do I? It's not going to be forever, Rach. I'm fed up with all this. Mum, I want to go home. Mum? Where's she going? Sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, mate. Thought you were someone else there. What do you think you're playing at? I, I Mom, that... please, pull yourself together. We're in a mess here. Who's that man? Oh, it was no one. Just someone your mum thought she knew. But it wasn't him. Oh, this is so stupid running away because someone's after us. I mean, why don't we just go to the police? Well, I, I, I don't think they believe us, love. Oh, I hate being here. Oh, Rachel. Rachel. We should never have come out. Well, we couldn't have stayed in. Rachel was cracking up, and I think I would have cracked up myself. Well, she's going to blow everything that she carries on, accusing strangers of being a dead husband. Yeah, well, uh, one of us is going to have to stay with her all the time. We can't afford to let her out of our sight. Hey, listen, if they're thinking of packing in, they better get this lot tidied up. Don't want Simbank coming back and finding it like this. Well, they better hadn't pack in. My garden's still like Sefton Park Bolton like that. Well, better get your rowing boat out then, haven't you, eh, kid? See you later. Oh, listen. What? Uh, 
I don't want to get too involved in this, like, but uh, your mate Simbad, he reckons he's got something stashed down there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Could be something, could be nothing. He mentioned it to me last week. But uh, I think he might appreciate it if he got it out before those fellas got back and started digging again. <sighs> might be valuable. Well, listen. But it'd be worth my while breaking out into a sweat for it, I'm telling you. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Oh. Well, is it expensive to use the phone from here? You're not phoning anybody. Who says I'm not? I do. Well, you're not in charge. And I only want to speak to Liam. He's not going to tell anyone where we are, is he? Well, it's probably best if you don't phone him, love, just for now. Oh, I can't even speak to my mates now. She's driving me mad. Well, I'm just as bad. I'm no good at this sort of thing. Come on, it's a first for all of us. So what now? Rachel's right to want to know what's going on. I'm not sure what we're going to do myself. What if they do dig him up? We definitely can't go back, can we? I'm not going to prison. None of us are. He deserve what he got. Yeah, but this seems so... Oh, I don't know. It's futile. What about money, work, somewhere to live? Well, I've still got a few bob left. And we could get a flat. Where? It doesn't matter where as long as we're out of the way. We might have to go to a different country. Yeah, but well, we're all Europeans now, aren't we? We're here in Provence, uh, just on front of your and all that. Well, I suppose we had a good try, but what if we went back? What, and throw our hand in before we even know what's happening? Could keep you two out of it. No, I'm involved. No one's giving up and no one's going home. Besides, there's nothing to go home to, is there? But we've been realistic. Yes. Look, I know it might be hard, but we're staying here until we get any news. And if they don't find the body? Well, in that case, we're in the clear, aren't we? Oh, yeah. oh God. Right, come in. Your turn, I'm knackered. Yeah. Eddie, what the hell are you doing now? Uh, keep it down, love. Simbad's got something stashed down here. We struck gold. Nice oh, one. Could be anything. Look, don't get involved, Dad. Come on, out. Ah, it's all right. I'm there now. Oh. Come on, Ed. Pull it up. I'm pulling it up. Ah! What? Eddie! What? What? what is it? What is it? It's a hand. What? Help! Ah! Oh, Uh, you don't mind me um, just starting today, do you, and finishing off tomorrow? No, no, not at all. Brilliant. Hey, something smells nice. What are you cooking? Saffron couscous. Mmm, sounds posh. <laughs> I've seen those vegetables before, then. Oh, of celeriac and fennel. Both organically grown. We've got Alice on additive-free food, so Max and I are trying to do the same with our diet. Oh, so you reckon it's good for the kids, then, all this organic stuff? Oh, I should hope so. It's expensive enough. You it... should grow some of your own out in the back, save you a few bob. I don't think it's quite as simple as that. Uh oh I can't see why not. Hey. Bit of soil, bit of fertiliser, away you go. <laughs> well, I've never really been the green-fingered type. Actually, it could save me a run a few, Bob. Especially the amount that this one's eaten all the time. You're shooting up, aren't you? Yeah, so is Alice. Yeah, she's coming on, isn't she? Actually, we're thinking of sending her to nursery, help her come on a bit more. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, we reckon it would be good for her development to mix with other children. Uh, have you got anywhere special in mind? Um, that nursery in Garford Road comes very highly recommended. Oh, um, yeah. <coughs> I suppose it is good for the kids, though, isn't it? You know, for the development going to nursery. Oh, Thomas came on in leaps and bounds once we sent him to nursery. Well, you've got to send them there then, haven't you, eh? Whatever's good for the kids. 
Fancy going into Dublin tomorrow, we could have a look around. I don't mind. Change of scenery will do us good. Well, at least Rachel's settling down a bit. Yeah, well, that won't last. We'll just keep on and on and pushing and asking questions. Yeah, well, as long as we stick to the same story, we'll be all right. Where is she? She was with us a minute ago. Oh, bloody hell, where's she got to? Let's go back this way. This is all we need. For God's sake, let's get back to the hotel. I mean, I touched that. It's horrible. Do you think this is a complete body don't wear it? Oh, God, I hope not. Hey, listen, uh, when the business come, don't, uh, you know, bring Sinbad's name up. I'm not going to start telling porkies for no one. Just, just keep me out of it. Yeah, but you know. You know what? Well, Sinbad's a mate, like, isn't he? Look, there's some kind of a body, or bits of one, underneath the bloody patio. Now, that's, that's taking hide and seek a bit far, isn't it? Sinbad won't have had anything to do with that. It'd stick me life on it. Well, maybe if I had. Look, if it's got nothing to do with Sinbad, why is he saying he's got something stashed away down there? And why is he suddenly not around? All right, lads. Right. You, uh, you better have a look in here. Well, that should do the trick. Splendid, thank you. Okay, mate. Max, things are really moving at last. The council have sent this chap over in direct response to my campaign. You think it'll work? Well, it clearly says no fouling, and there's a fine of up to five hundred pounds. So Corky will better take note, hasn't he? What's going on over there? I'm not sure. I think we ought to take a look. Well, the police are there. I suggest we leave it to them. Well, there's no harm in you and I, as members of the residence committee, assisting our local constabulary if needed. Max, it's our duty. Come on. You know, it's a pity we can't get Corkill banned from the close as well as his dog. It wouldn't surprise me at all if he's been up to no good. Let's just hope he's been caught red-handed. Well, come on, let's not jump to conclusions, eh? There's probably a simple explanation. Experience has taught me always, when Corkill's around, to expect the worst. The man's a carbuncle on the face of society. What's going on? Eddie found some kind of an arm while he was digging. Good grief. What? Human? It looked like it. We only saw the hand, but the chances are there could be a body down there. Whose? Oh, how should I know? I only shook hands with it. But uh, I'm sure these fellas will be onto it in no time. What are you doing? Well, uh, the garden's frozen, so I'm going to soften it with this, and then we can go organic. Organic? Well, if our Josh has got all these food allergies, I mean, the purer his food is, the better. Bev, these quacks will tell you anything, though. They've probably all got shares in these organic farms or something. Well, organic food will be good for the three of us. Yes, but it's too expensive. Which is why we're going to grow our own. I mean, Patricia Farnham seems to think it's worth giving it a go. Ah, well, Lady Farnham would, wouldn't she? Well, it's good for us. But, Bev, you don't know the first thing about growing veg, do you, love? You're even starting at the wrong time of the year. Which is why I'm doing this. I've got my manure ordered, and pretty soon we'll have everything on the go, won't we? I'm even going to get a library book out on it. Oh, yeah? And when do you think that you're going to get time to do all this? Because I don't want our Josh getting neglected, you know. He's going to nursery. What nursery? It'll, um, it'll be good for his, his development. His development? Oh. This wouldn't be another Pat Farnham plan by any chance, would it? Well, we have discussed it, but it was my own decision. Bev, listen... Come oh, on, he'll come on leaps and bounds, won't he? And anyway, if it's good enough for Patricia Farnham's kids, it's good enough for ours. What's happening now? Seeing the house off. Probably gonna go over the place with a fine tooth comb for flus. What do you think's going on there? Well, I'll tell you something. You don't get nothing out of the busies. 
Well, they're going to start gossiping, aren't they? They're professionals. All looks well, don't you, though, doesn't it? Well, I should leave it to the forensics people. Let them sort it out. It all points to some sort of skullduggery, doesn't it? But you don't think the Joe and Bessie's getting off so quick had anything to do with it, do you? And Sinbad. Oh, Holmes and Watson, eh? You pair of grasses. Oh, come on. Mandy and the girls won't know nothing about this. I mean, this body or whatever it is could have been down there for years. Maybe. But a gruesome discovery like this and their disappearance looks like more than mere coincidence. Where's Rachel? She was so bad watching TV. What have we done, Beth? Running away. It's ridiculous. We couldn't just sit there and watch them dig him up. We had to do something. We were fools to think we could ever get away with it. I mean, murder someone, bury them, and then hope it all goes away forever. Mum, remember, it was him or us. We shouldn't regret anything we did. I don't. All's I regret is him ever being part of our lives. But what we did was wrong! Mum, stop it! He's winning and we can't let him. Remember what he did. He ruined our lives, all the beatings, what he did to me and Rachel. We should have reported him to the police and had him locked up. Oh, yeah, and then what? Under the safe house. He'd have found us, and the same thing would have happened again and again and again. It would never have stopped. H who is it? Any news? There's nothing in any of those. You so say we've just got to hold out. She's right, man. I mean, if they were going to find something, they would have done by now. They must have... I'd have been in the papers. You don't really think we've got away with this, do you? Well, like I said, there's a good chance they won't even find the body. And if we don't hear anything by tomorrow, I think we should think about going home. Because we could be in the clear. Remember, Brookside continues tomorrow and every night this week at 8.30. Next tonight over on ITV, someone to watch over me. Here on 4, getting mad and getting even. Some extreme examples of retribution highlighted in Revenge. Tonight's Cutting Edge, next. Stay in and keep Rachel amused. Last thing we want is for her getting in a flap. Morning, Sarge. Morning. I thought you'd done a runner. 
You were fast asleep. I didn't want to disturb you. My palate. I just had to get out. I couldn't sleep. Every time I close my eyes, I see you. OK. Well, tell me when you're going. Me and Beth didn't know what to think. I'm sorry. Is there anything in the papers? Well, there's nothing on the front page. <sighs> well, that's a good start. The longer it goes on, the better. I've been thinking, um, if I got in touch with the Shackletons, and just to, you know, if Trevor is found, they might be able to help. Look, let's not talk to anyone, eh? I don't know how much longer I can take this. Well, don't think too far into the future. Just take everything day by day. It's still dominating our lives. Over the faithful husband, he'll never leave us alone. Well, you're bound to feel like this. It's all the stress, isn't it? Yeah, well, we shouldn't have done it. We had no option. Well, that's what I keep trying to tell myself. You know, in a way, maybe I always knew that it would come to... come to killing him. But that day when I, when I stuck the knife in him, God, the relief. Being set free from hating him and from hating myself for loving him. I just wish we'd gone to the police. And it was him or you. But I've ruined Beth and Rachel's lives. You've saved both their lives. Think of what he did to them. He raped Beth. And then he went and did the same thing to Rachel, his own daughters. He would never have been able to keep his filthy hands to himself. Yeah, but look what he's doing to us. I just feel like going to sleep and never waking up. If I was brave enough, I'd... Now, that's enough of that. I don't want to hear any of that talk. Listen, I'm sticking by you. We're going to face all this together. I, I don't know how you can stand to be around me. You know why. I'm a walking disaster area. Trevor, that business with Maguire. Forget it. But it happened. And you know you can't forget it, otherwise you wouldn't be sleeping in the chair. Please, don't bring all this up again. Come on. The girls will be wondering where we are. at the door, love. Mm, that reported again. They don't give up, do they? Mm, I'm not going to answer the door to them again. Oh, and David Crosby knocked. He's called an extraordinary meeting of the Residents <sighs> Association this morning. Well, I can't go. I've got to go into work. Oh, God. It's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. And to think Ali and Rachel could have discovered their hand when they were burying that knock-off stuff down there. Hmm? wonder if they know who it is, yeah? Not unless he's got his passport on him. <sighs> It'll be all that uh, forensic stuff, won't it? You don't think it's got anything to do with the jaw dashes, do you? Nah, you were right. Could have been down there for yonks. They're just ordinary next door neighbours. Yeah, well, what about Simbad? He knew something was down there, didn't he? I mean, he might have said it was something valuable, but what if he knew something else was down there? Yeah, but. Well, I suppose he might. Nah, nah, not so bad. No, we don't know him, love. I mean, who really knows the neighbours? Did you mention it to the police? What? Did Simbad said he had something buried down there? No, I'm not going to get involved. The police will know he's missing, and if he has got something to do with it, they'll catch up with him, wherever he is. Cover to cover, there's no mention of it. No, I know you said that if there was nothing in today's papers, we should go home. I think it's a bit too soon, just to be extra sure. Fair enough. Another day or so, then. Let's just make sure you and Rachel are happy. Yeah. 
Where is she? Well, she'll be down in a minute. She's still making a real fuss about things, though. Well, she's going to keep on until she knows exactly why we're here. Oh, you're not suggesting we tell her, are you? Well, supposing they do find the body and she sees it in the papers or on the TV before we do. Talking about me? No, um, we'll talk about something else. Look, something's going on. It's obvious. Let's just go for a walk, shall we? I'd sooner go home. Mum, I don't want to stay here anymore. Look, we've told you before, right? It's not that simple. You've told me nothing, and I know something's not right. Right. Have a good day. Okay, thank you. Right, come on, let's just go out and enjoy ourselves, eh? Can't you at least try and put a brave face on for Rachel's sake? Oh, yeah. I feel like the fugitive and want me to go around looking like I've won the lottery. But your face, you look terrified. It's because I am terrified. Yeah, and don't you think I am? I've given up as much as you, Mum. I've given up a lot. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. But if you don't want Rachel or anyone else to know why we're here, then you're going to have to act differently because you've got guilt written all over you. Right. Do my best. Aye, aye. Good turnout, eh, kids? Well, I hardly think a tragic event like this should be treated as a spectator sport. Oh, can I draw your attention to that new sign over there? That prohibits your dog from fouling the pavements. Well, I know Cracker's an intelligent dog, but uh, reading is not one of her talents. Our children about, you know. Well, she's only marking out her territory, Mrs C. I mean, you've seen all those nature programmes on the telly, haven't you? Anyway, listen, I am only here to see if any of those journos are interested in my story. You're not going to talk press, are you? Yeah. Well, why not? I used to live there, didn't I? <laughs> well, off and on. When it was estranged from Jackie, you know. That's outrageous. I know. That's what I told her when she threw me out. Hey, listen, do you reckon there's anyone here from any of those fancy papers? I don't give a damn. <sighs> a man's a total miscreant, if ever there was one. Has your mum mentioned going home yet? No, why? She was on about getting in touch with the Shackletons. Well, what for? I don't know, I suppose she just wants as many people around her on her side as she can, just in case the worst does come to the worst. <laughs> well, the Shackletons won't be much help if she's talking about giving herself up. Yeah, no, I've told her. But I don't think she's thinking straight. I wonder if any of us are. Shall we uh, see if we can find a cafe or something? Rachel's thirsty. Yeah, uh, I'll take it up there, see if I can find a shop. Can I have a can of lemonade, please? Yeah, sure. See you in a minute, OK? Thank you. I feel so sorry for her, caught in the middle of all this mess. We're all in this together, Mum. Yeah, but we dragged her away from her home. She didn't have time to say goodbye or anything. I don't know the feeling. <sighs> we should have time to say goodbye to Viv. I was thinking of maybe writing her a quick note or giving her a quick call. You're not serious. After all the fuss over Rachel trying to phone Lee. Yeah, I know, but I'm not stupid. I won't tell where we are, just that I'm OK. I mean, what if she decides to go to the police and report me missing or something? Yeah, I suppose you're right. And anyway, she deserves an explanation. I just walked out on her. What sort of an explanation would you have given her? I don't know. Maybe I could trust her with the truth. Beth, you've only known her five minutes. She's someone that you just picked up wherever it was. I didn't just pick her up. She's a friend. Oh, well, she's a bit more than that. She's a lesbian. So, so what? How can you say that, so what? Oh, Beth, look, we're away from all that now. Put it behind you. Start again. That's what we're here for, isn't it? We might be able to run away from that, but we can't run away from what I am. You don't really know what you are or what harm you're doing to yourself. Look, don't you see what all this lesbianism stuff is about? I don't believe I'm hearing this. I don't actually want to. You're going around with these people. Margaret, Chris, now Viv. But that's not you. That's not the real you. Mum, I am what I am, and you have to accept that. I thought you had. Well, I tried. I really did, love. But it seemed wrong, cos you're not really a lesbian. This is just a... A reaction, a reaction to what your father did. No, it's not. I can understand that any mother could. I mean, he raped you. He made you hate men. I don't hate men. Any girl would be put off men after what you went through, but this thing is unnatural. How can you say that? My feelings are the most natural I've ever known. It's not just about feelings, Beth. It's about what you do physically. I don't do anything I'm ashamed of. Beth, it's a phase. No, it's not a phase. 
I can't explain what makes me feel this way. I just do. Maybe it's always been there deep down. I don't know. I just know that I'm happy being what I am. I don't... Once this is all over and you've cleared things out of your mind, your relationships up, you'll find proper love. You're not listening. I don't want to go out with boys and pretend just to make you feel good. I feel content with myself. And for once in my life, I'm not fighting against it. I'm a lesbian and you have to accept that. I want you to love me whatever I am. I'll never accept it. All I wanted was a normal family and what do I get? A husband who sleeps with his daughters and a daughter who sleeps with other women. What do I get? A mother who sleeps with a man for money. Thanks, I needed to hear that. Do you think I need to hear that my mum doesn't accept me for what I really am? Yeah, well, I told you I'll never accept it. Well, let's pay you too, then. Now, before we start, I would like to thank the Dixons. Well, that is, um... Ron and Beverly, of course, uh, for allowing us to hold this extraordinary meeting of the Brookside Residents Association in their house. No props, Dave. Hey, you. It was my idea. And you're all welcome at Casa Beveron any time. Thank you, Beverly. Now, Patricia, would you mind taking the minutes, please? Our uh, regular secretary is, as we know, unavailable, and uh, your mother hasn't graced us with her presence yet. Now, I realise you've all given up your valuable time, so I shall try and be brief. Oh. Well, jaw dashes have gone missing, though, haven't they? And Sinbad. Come on, you're not suggesting that Sinbad's involved, are you? And he's your window cleaner, for God's sake. It does seem odd that they're all missing. Mm. Their body's just been dug up. You were there, Rosie. What did you see? Did you recognise anything? Oh, oh, it was horrible. Oh, Eddie, he ripped back this bag, and then he reached in, and just as he touched the... Yes, if I could just get back to Hold the... Hold on, then. Hold on. Go on, Rose. I don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. It's getting juicy, then. Well, don't put the cat on. So, uh, why was Eddie digging there anyway? Well, he was just giving the blokes an hand, you know. We've had this terrible flood in our back garden. Do you know what? I reckon Eddie must have just thrown his hand in. Mm. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Well, there is always the possibility that the body was there before the Jordashes moved in. Hey, maybe it was a German paratrooper from the war. The people before could have buried the body there. Hey, my mum used to live there, I remember. And after that, it was a bobby, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, Rod and Diana. Forgotten them. Yeah, so don't go speculating in that direction, all right? Wouldn't dream of it. Not young Rod. Not the type. Who is? Actually, I did hear that they found another body in the bathroom. But just turned out to be head and shoulders. <laughs> mm. <sighs> all right, you go in there and get the drinks. I'll go into the papers, all right? All right. Whether he was my head and the tail of them. <laughs> David is the much more. I've got to get back to work. See me, Miss. And me. No, no, no. It's just any other business now. Oh, you are all invited to our housewarming party on Friday. Any time. No need to bring a bottle. Splash now from the neighbours. But uh, if you did feel the need to bring some alcohol with you, then I wouldn't be offended. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I minute that? Now, if nobody has anything for any other business, I would like yes, to raise. Yes, actually, the... I have uh, something to say. Actually. Um, I, I seem to remember, in, in the terms uh, of the freehold on the houses in the close, that uh, it forbade construction of fixed borders. Hey, don't talk to me about borders, mate. I've had enough of this decorating. <laughs> Not on the outside, though, I see. Subtlety, Max. What's all this got to do with police and stuff? I just thought I'd raise it while everybody's here. One of the residents has erected a fence. You know... I think he's talking about us. I think he is. 
The fence contravenes the contract. Well, it's only a dirty one. I think it's very nice. That is not the point. Max, it's only a bit of a fence, that's all. He just wants his place to look as good as mine. Hey, that fence gives us individuality. So what's your problem, Maxie? Are you jealous? No, not quite. May I suggest that the position of the fence be looked into and the position clarified later? Yeah, and the sooner the better for me. And me. Right, better get going. Uh, just a moment, please, before you go. Please, if I uh, may detain you for one final point, and may I say it is a very important one and a potentially hazardous issue. Dog dirt. It's out. They found him. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that's it then. No, no, it's not. Now, look, we can get our heads together and work something out, OK? If there's nothing else we can do. We're going to have to tell Rachel. No, we can't. Well, for quantity of life, just face things. Well, we can't tell her here. Well, we'll go back to the hotel then. OK. So, if we're agreed, then, we'll all be extremely vigilant in the matter of dogs fouling the pavement, and if things don't improve, we'll consider a petition to the relevant authorities. Nice one, Dave. Well, see us. Right, yeah, I'll have to go. The excitement's too much for me. Uh, right, well, thank you all for coming, and I now declare the meeting closed. Thank you. Hey, Barry. Uh, I'd just like to talk to you about this Emma business. What is your problem with Emma? Well, I don't think it's such a good idea, the management uh, being over-familiar with the staff. Excuse me, ma'am. What are you trying to say? <laughs> Look, if I've noticed it, then I'm sure the rest of the staff have noticed it. I, I think it could cause problems. Is that it, then? Lecture over? Uh, yes. Good. Fine. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Everything OK? Yes, Barry and I have just uh, cleared the air, and now we both know where we stand. Good. God, <laughs> taking the body away. Makes my flesh crawl. Well, it looks like it won't be too long before we find out who it is, then, eh? Drink. I just want to know what all this is about. I'm trying to tell you. That. Tell me what? Well, um... I've done something. And, uh... It wasn't supposed to turn out the way that it did, but, um... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry, love. Mum, what is it? I didn't mean it, love. What's she done? We're not here because of Maguire. It's not after us. I knew you were lying. So what are we doing here, then? Why have we come all this way? Just hold on. Why can't we just go back home? Beth's trying to explain, Rich. We're here because of Dad. What? We're here because of something that happened with Dad. You know what he was like? He used to hit Mum whenever he felt like it. He was a bully. And that's why he had to go to prison. And when he came out, he hadn't learnt a thing. He hadn't changed, not one bit. But what has this got to do with us being here, Mum? Well, I'll tell you. Things were getting really out of hand. Dad had got worse. And he threatened to kill us. Not my dad. Yeah. Your dad. And on that day, he meant it. He would have killed us. He was hitting me really, really hard, and it wouldn't stop. You, you have to understand. I finished it. I had to once and for all, and the and the only way was. I never really meant to, but I killed him. I killed your dad. It was the only way to stop him from what he did to us all, what he did to you. He was my dad. And he loved me. He never touched me. He was my dad and you killed him. I hate you. Don't touch me. You killed my dad.
Where did she go? I don't know. Oh, where's she gone? Man, you wait here. You have a look up that way and I'll go down here, okay? See it anyway. <laughs> Our special Brookside Week continues tomorrow and every night this week at eight thirty. Crazy. But what can we do? I'm so tired. Rachel could be anywhere by now. I know. I'll tell you what, we should have stayed at that B and B. It's much safer. We couldn't. If we'd have stayed any longer, we would have cracked up. There she is. Any hope? No. You look shattered. So what? It seems we're outside the cafe. Why don't we just nip and have a sit down and a nice cup of tea? Oh, for God's sake, Rachel's been out here somewhere all night, and you want to drink tea? OK. Anything could have happened. Mum, she survived London. She'll be all right. Yeah, but she didn't know then what she knows now. I think she may have gone to the busies. Well, if she had, they'd have picked us up by now, wouldn't they? Yeah, well, at least she'd be safe. Oh, God, what if she... I mean, she could have thrown herself under a bus or anything. Mum, don't say that. Of course she wouldn't have. Well, how do you know? I just do. Let's just keep looking. Are you sure you don't want me to just go in and get a couple of bacon sandwiches or something? Oh, I don't know how you can think of eating at a time like this. Go on, then. No, it doesn't matter. Rachel! Bev. Bev, come and have a look at this lot, love. Put Billy Smart to shame, wouldn't they? Mm. I hope they're not going to give the close a dodgy name. I've only just got here. Mm. Anything in the paper? Still don't know who the body is. Bloody hell. How's your painting going? Fine, fine. I should be going for the wallpaper any minute. Do you think it'll be ready for the housewarming? Well, we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? Well, it best had be. Otherwise, I'll be serving Dixon's dry roasted nuts with the buffet. You're all heart, you, do you know that? Mm, I know. 
Anyway, what have you got planned for the rest of the day while I'm getting poisoned by these pink fumes? Well, me and yours due this morning. Well, that's thrilling. So I'll cook at me cabbage patch on the go. Bev, is there not the say to talk you out of this caper? No, I'm detained. OK, Percy Thrower. And then, once I've spread me muck, me and Josh are going to sit back and watch a sideshow over the road. Hard life, innit, eh? Mm. I wonder who that body is. God knows. There could be all kinds buried under there, like that fella, you know, what's his name? Yes, thank you, the voice of doom. My money was on it being her husband, but... Nah, they've already buried him once, haven't they? Maybe they were missing him. <laughs> There's no need for that, you know. Sorry. Anyway, it mightn't be anything to do with Mandy. I mean, could be some ancient Roman cemetery. Oh, yeah, they had been bags in Julius Caesar's day, did they? Then again, it did say in the paper the police were looking for her to help with inquiries, so what does that tell you? I would know, my sweet. I'm one of the odd job man, but they obviously know something we don't. Mm. Right, thanks for that, David. No, oh, not at all, Max. Just as long as you realise I'm not biased in anyone's favour. Oh, no, 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 of course not. No, but it's just satisfying to know I was right all along. Morning. Oh, morning. Oh, sorry, Ron. Didn't spot you there. Fence block your view, did it, Maxie? <laughs> yes, but not for long. You see, our esteemed chairman of the Residents Association has kindly checked the paperwork on our properties. In the interest of fair play, Ron. <laughs> has he now? And guess what? What? It's got to go. It's uh, against the covenant and the deeds, I'm afraid. <laughs> Cheers, Pink. Sorry, Ron. The 30 pieces of silver's in the post. So, if you need a hand shifting it... Maxie, have you ever stopped for one second to listen to yourself? There's all kinds of things being dug up over the road. Dead bodies and everything. Mandy Jordash is on the run somewhere with them two kids. We can't say that for sure. God only knows what's been going on, but all you're worried about is some lousy little fence. Life goes on, Ron. Yeah, well, sue me, because that is going nowhere. You can't go against the rules. You want to bet? I'll see you in the small claims. But, look, tell him. There's nothing I can say at the moment. I... Oh, oh, excuse me, officer. Good morning, Mr. Crosby. Morning. Uh, any developments? Yeah, there's five peel for lion bar at the shop round the corner. Sorry? That's the extent of my inside info, I'm afraid. I'm on snack duty for the fat cats. <laughs> oh, I see. Story of my life. So there's no news on the identity of the body? Dunno. That's the man to ask. Oh, and who might he be? Detective Inspector Chris Coburn. Who? My brother. <coughs> oh, really? Not that he likes to advertise the fact. I don't suppose there's any chance of using a little uh, fraternal influence on the body front, is there? I wouldn't hold your breath. Pity. <coughs> Even if we had an inkling of what was down there. I'd love to know myself. You see, it would help to put the residents' minds at rest. Hmm. I don't suppose there's any crime in asking. Oh, surely not. I'll see what I can do, eh? Oh, good man. Look, uh, do you want me to phone that B&B, see if she's shown up? It's all right, I'll do it. There's a phone down there. All right, well, I'll nip in here and get the papers, see what the next instalment is. OK, OK. Have you got any change? Uh... Yeah, here yeah. Thanks. What? That. Oh, I'm sorry. I suppose it was only a matter of time. What else did it say? Uh, well, they still haven't identified Trevor's body. Blah, 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 blah. They're still looking for you and the girls. And now they want to interview Thomas Sweeney, local window cleaner and close friend of the family. Is there any news? No, is there anything in there? This. Fame at last day. Eh? Come on, we better keep moving.
So, how's it all going? Good enough. Found anything interesting? Any ideas on the body yet? Classified, sorry. Oh, you've actually ID'd him then? I didn't say that. Well, oh, what you meant. I thought you were doling out the Mars bars. Can't even give us a clue. This is a murder investigation, not a bloody game show. So, was murder then? That's not what I said. Yes, it is. All right, maybe. And you know who the stiff is. Work it out for yourself. You're a copper, aren't you? It's the husband. What? Been under there months. Now wife is done a bunk. Starting to get the picture. But well, surely not. Surely not what? Well, I met Mrs. Joan Ash a couple of times. She seemed really nice. <laughs> you always were a good judge of character. But anyway, she buried her husband. I must be a year ago now. Yeah, not in the cemetery. So who's? Don't know yet. We're having the other body dug up later this afternoon. But one thing's for sure, it ain't the late Trevor Jordash. Inspector, any further progress on naming the corpse? No comment. Is that a yes or a no? It's no comment. Excuse me. Yeah? Quick word. Well, I wonder if you could do me a massive favour. Need a hand? All right, thanks. Sure. Yeah. So, what favour, mate? Well, I was uh, hoping to rent a bedroom off you for a quarter of an hour. Eh? Well, just to get a few snaps of next door's back garden. Uh, I don't think so. Well, be out of your way in no time. The last thing I need is you lot crawling all over me house. Oh, I'll go with the easiest 500 quid you'll ever make. How much? Well, throw in the uh, story of how you found the body and I'll make it a grand. But how did you know I... All right, do you need a lift? Uh, yeah, it's hard, so... <sighs> Sorry, pal, not interested. Oh, come on, man, let's have a blow for five minutes, no. eh? No! You're dead on your feet. I don't care. Please, Mum, can we not just stop for a cup of tea? We all need to. <sighs> yeah, all right, then. The next place we see, we'll stop. But only for five minutes, OK? <sighs> Mum. What? Well, I know this probably isn't the best time, but there's a few things we need to sort out. Like what? Well, we need to get our stories straight. What? Well, if Rachel has gone to the police, then we're all stitched up. And even if she hasn't, well, it's only a matter of time before they find us. So... She's right, you know. We've got to get ourselves organised. We've got to make sure that we all say the same thing and... and make sure they know that he deserved to die. Well, he did. Well, we know that. Yeah, well, the busies believe us. And anyway, we don't have to get anything straight. I did it. I was the one who put the knife in him. It's got nothing to do with you two. Well, well now you tell me. Oh, we're all in this together. Look, it's best if you two stay out of this. But I thought, no, please, I don't want to talk about this. I just want my little girl back. Here you are. She's cafe. We'll stop and have a cup of tea now. I see there are another lot turned up. Yeah. I know it's the Chinese year of the pig, but this is ridiculous. That chair no still hanging round? It certainly is. Oh, only 500 quid. <laughs> Don't quite know it. I'm all for a couple of snaps. I can't. The bouncer got more money, do you? 
here. Why lose out? Hmm. What arm could it do? I don't know. There you go, then. I suppose it'd cover the cost of getting the patio fixed. Exactly. Right, no story, just the pictures. I'll make it quick. Lead on, Macduff. Lead on. Where now? I don't know. Well, we can't hang around here. Don't you think we should go back to the hotel and wait there? No, I can't. Not while Rachel's still out here. Mm -hmm. I hope to God she's all right. I'll be. But what if she's not? Wait, what if some pervert's picked her up off the street? It'll be my fault. Oh, I can't bloody stand this. Mum! Brandy, where do you go? The police, I've got to find out if something's happened. No, you can't! I've got to! You can't! Now, after all that's happened, that we'll find it, I promise. Please don't blow it now. Everyone knew what it was like. Very handy with his fists. As long as it was some poor defenceless woman he was knocking about. Well, you know the sort. Needs a bit of help from his mate Johnny Walker to pluck up the courage to pick on someone half his size. Do you, do you ever see any of this violence firsthand? Oh, well, I only met him the once. <laughs> but I thought you just said No, that... no, it's my fella Ron telling me all this. So, uh, why do you want to know all this about Al Trev? Oh, my God. He didn't stick someone in the back garden before he popped his clogs, did he? We're just trying to piece things together, that's all. He did, didn't he? No. Well, what happened? Miss McLaughlin. Go on, tell us. Read the papers in the morning. Spills, spills. Uh, come ahead, time up. I should do it, Dan. Sure you don't want to double your money? No, thanks. Ah, well, you're still a star anyway. Yeah, yeah. Checks in the post. Nice one, Dan. Excuse me, have you got a boarding pass? So, who's next for the Gestapo treatment? Uh, the Farnhams. Oh, Max is always good for a bit of go... Oh, my God! <sighs> right, well, uh, thanks for your help. I never ordered this much. Oh, this is for you, you know, mate. Mr. Farnham? Yes? I'm Detective Inspector... Oh, blazes! Coburn. Um, perhaps I'll call back when it's more convenient. Why is there a pile of crap on my front part? Um, I think I've got my order wrong. It's my vegetable patch. What? All of it? it must have been mix up. You better get a shovel. It was your pat's idea. I don't care. Shift it. Mum, are you sure there's any point in looking down here again? Yes. If she jumped on the boat, she'd be well on by now. How do you know? Well, I don't. Exactly. It's the busiest. Look out. So, would you say you knew the Jordash as well? Well enough. Well enough to what? I'm sorry, I'm not. Well, well enough to say hello to? Oh, more than that. Well enough to confide in? Not exactly. 
But you did know that the husband was uh, handy with his fists. It's common knowledge he had a criminal record for it. I don't suppose you were ever actually witness to any of this violence? No, not really, but um, I do remember a particularly unpleasant drinks party we attended. And what happened? Well, nothing really, but um, my wife and I, we just knew that the man at that door shut behind us. But you were never actually privy to violence of any kind? No. Look, I, I, I don't know what you're trying to get at here, but I really can't see how Mrs. Jordash could possibly be involved in a crime of this nature. The woman abhorred violence. Of what nature? Well, murder. Nobody's accusing Mrs. Jordash of anything at this point in time. <laughs> no, no, sorry. Now, if we could move on to Thomas Sweeney. Who? Alias Sinbad. <laughs> yes. Now, as you can best recall, how long would you say his and Mrs. Jordash's friendship has been going on? I'm not sure. Well, roughly. I really couldn't say. Well, did it start, say, before or after Trevor Jordash's funeral? Um, before. How can you be sure of that? Well, I, I remember him being very helpful over the funeral arrangements. I see. But that's just the sort of chap he is. It's in his nature. He'd do anything for anybody. I'm sure he would. <laughs> right. Thanks, Mr Crosby. You've been a great help. Oh, is that it? Well, we may need a fuller statement at a later date, but for now, yeah. Well, good luck. Not that you'll need it. No, I don't think we will. Bye. Man, what are you going to say? No, no, we just want to make sure she's all right. Mum, has that done until we know what's been said? Yeah, just say nothing. OK. What can I do for you? Um, I know this might sound silly, but I think I've just seen my daughter in the back of one of your police cars. Oh, is that right? Yeah, we had a bit of a round. She ran off in a huff. Yeah, we'd be looking for her all over the place, you know. Tell me, is she about 16? Dark hair? Yeah, that's right. That'll be our little stowaway. Hey. Ah, she got caught trying to get back on the ferry to England. Oh, typical. Oh, is she OK? Oh, yeah. A little weepy, but no harm done. The ferry boys are happy to write it off as a schoolgirl prank. She's here, then. Oh, yeah. I'll go and fetch her for you. Have you seen that? Oh, God. Look, we can't stay around here. The town's too small. Here she is. Oh, Rachel. I think you owe your mum and dad an apology. Don't you, young lady? Uh, it's all right. It was something and nothing. You'd best get back to the hotel. I think you could do with a good night's right sleep. <laughs> Hold on. I'm afraid there's still a bit of paperwork to do. I thought you said you weren't going to press charges. Oh, that's right. And Muggins here still has a hat full of reports to make out. And as for you, young lady, I hope you've learned your lesson from all this. Right. I'll go and get those forms. Oh, come on, we're out of here. Yeah, come on, he's right. Get him on. Well, where are we going? I don't know. Just get on the bloody bus. Is this all we've got to look forward to? A life on the run? Yeah, and the Guinness for now. What's the point? The point is we're still in with a shout. Maybe they're gonna find us sooner or later. Oh, hey, man, don't throw your hand in just yet. Stick with it, eh? Channel 4 video entitled Brookside The Women, featuring classic clips from the first 12 years of Brookside, together with brand new material, is out now in most video shops. 
next tonight on 4, a feature-length introduction to new drama. The pressures and passions in a hospital emergency room. ER is after the break. in with a lot more sleep. Mm. Well, couldn't we all? Well, poor thing's shattered. I know, but we've got to keep on the move, and that means a new B&B every day. Mm. And what happens when the money runs out? We'll rob a bank. <gasps> I was joking. Yeah. I've identified Trevor. I knew Sustwood in Ireland. Well, did they know we're in Dublin? Doesn't say. They've got photos of us in there. No, just, um... Who? Just your dad. Just leave. Let's have a look. Well, how have they got a picture of the back garden? I think I'll give Eddie Banks a ring. He might know. Oh, surely not. Every two-faced get has his price. Tosser. And there's another thing. Oh. They're digging up the other fan the one you identified. Oh, God. And what's been said about that? The papers are trying to make out that we had something to do with him snuffing it as well. Oh, so we're going to be on the wrong end of the biggest manhunt since the Yorkshire Ripper came to town. Great. What now? What's that Trevor George Ashbury done in the patio? You're joking. See for yourself. Bloody Nora. I'm gonna be digging another one out of the cemetery and all. You what? And they reckon they've all done a bump to Ireland. Flaming hell. God knows how many she's bumped off. Uh-uh. Now we don't know it was her yet, do we? Oh no, of course we don't. Could have been a fancy fella for all we know. Sinbad! They've got a time to kill a blue bottle. Oh yeah, so why is he on the run then? Maybe it was the pair of them. It's always the quiet ones, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Anyway, enough of this gossip. You'll be hand scheduled. Fear not, my lovely. I shall have this lot well finished in time for your precious party. Mm, I'll believe it when I see it. Anyway, you've got no room to talk, have you? There's still half a ton of them, and you're out there needs shifting. All right, I know. I don't know why you needed it in the first place, you and know. Your son can have a healthy upbringing. Bev, don't you think you're taking things just a little bit too far? No. You are what you eat. That's what Pat says. Mm. And if all this organic here is good enough for the Farnhams, it's good enough for me. Bloody Farnham's. How long can we keep this up for? What? No clothes, no money, nowhere to go. Yeah, well, we've still got a few bob left. Wouldn't it be better for all of us if I just gave myself up? No. We're gonna catch us in the end. Says who? 
Man, we're not beaten yet. Mum. What, love? Why'd you do it? I... Why? I don't know. I don't know why any of this happened. Did you plan it? No. Well... Did you or didn't you? We talked about it. The two of you sat in our house and talked about killing my dad. Well, that's how bad things had got. So, when did you decide to do it? We didn't. That's not how it happened. Then how did it happen? He attacked me. He was beating the living daylights out of her. You there, were you? Your mum had no choice. What? He's right, Rach. So you killed him because he hit Beth? No. I killed him because he raped me. He raped Beth and he raped you. He never laid a finger on me. Now you know that's a lie. When did you do it? Nearly two years ago. When he went missing? Yes. But what about the funeral? Wasn't your dad? Then who was it? A dead tramp. What? I'm sorry. And that's who I cried for. I just wanted to give you the chance to mourn him. How did you do it? What? How did you kill him? Tell me, I want to know. With a knife. He stabbed him. Yes. Where? In the kitchen. No, where? In the heart, the stomach, where? In the back. I stabbed him in the back. I hate you! Wake us up! No! You killed my dad! Wake up! Sorry. Mum. Sorry. It's all right. Come on, up you get. A traitor. Who? Our friend Eddie Banks. He's let the weasels of the press corps in behind the barbed wire. What? The whole sorry affair gets more sordid by the minute. No, I shouldn't have to put up with this. What with corpses and coppers? Stinks. It's an eyesore. And now Judas and the journalists. My God, Max, I despair of humanity sometimes. I'm sick to the back teeth of it. Join the club. Where are you going? Ah, Ron, a word in your ear. What is it now, Maxie? Just wanted to let you know I am sick of your crap. Eh? Hey, it's mine, not his. Well, then get rid of it. I'm trying. I rang the fella, but he can't come till next week. Next week? Sorry. Well, why don't we share it out among the residents? My roses could do with a couple of buckets. Nice one, Dave. Help yourself. No, thank you. Well, if it isn't Mr. Iscariot himself, eh? We've all seen the fruits of your collusion with the parasites of Fleet Street. Oh. I wonder where they got that photo from. What's the price of betrayal these days, Eddie? That's my business. Amanda Jordash, what about her? Is her welfare your business too? Hey, you got a few bob to spare. You can invest in some manure. Look, forget about him. Ron, what about all this lot? Nothing to do with me, mate. I'm just a monkey. Beverly, I'm in a loose end. Why don't I help you bag it up, we can pop it in the back of the van, take it back to whence it came. Oh, are you sure? Uh, yes, he is. Now, David, you get the van and I will happily donate the bin bags. Joe! In here. What are you doing home? Took half a day. Mm. How come? Roy Mitchell off the National Exec Committee has been on. They've stuck me on a bleeding course starting Monday. What sorts of course? Oh, I don't know, workers' awareness or something. Anyway, I've got to plough through this lot, so here I am. Will it be at a college in town? I wish. It's a flame in Lancaster. Mm. Best place for you. Hey? After this lot. Oh, God. Don't dare you go behind my back letting these scumbags sneak into our house for their pound of flesh. They were only in here five minutes. What happened to Eddie Banks, man of principle, eh? Well, I didn't yeah, think it... You saw the pound signs in front of your eyes, did you? <laughs> Some socialist you are. Oh, wish I'd never bothered now. How much did you get? 500 quid. Yeah? Well, I don't care what you do with it. But don't think a penny of it's going on me or this house. It's a 
that's how we're going to spend the rest of our lives, eh? Hiding on buses. Well, it'll do for a couple of hours at least. And no one's going to think we're a gag at all, are they? Yeah, what happens when we get to the end of the line? Good question. Oh, we'll think of something. Well, what? Well, we'll have to disappear. We got Paul Daniel's phone number. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Call us, get on. We're now about to begin our tour of Dublin, the capital city. <laughs> Just pong a bit after a while, doesn't it? There's nothing wrong with the smell of Mother Nature, Beverly. Let's just hope we don't find any dead bodies in here. Oh, God forbid. Makes you think, though, doesn't it? What does? That lot over the road. Yeah. Oh. Well, I think that's enough for this one. I mean, I'm not saying who did what, but I don't think it's a bit dodgy the way Sinbad was mysteriously touched with the money to buy that house. Right, here we oh. go. Oh. Oh. So. What exactly are you suggesting? I don't know. I wish my mother had moved to Australia and sent me a big fat check. Well, do you think it might be a cover story? Oh, maybe. Maybe they bumped Al Trev off, went to see the man from the Pru and cashed the chips in. Double indemnity. Don't know about that. But I reckon they fiddly insurance. Excuse me. Yes? Um, mm, about this photo lark. I'd hardly call it a lark. Uh, no, well, I gathered that. Uh, anyway, um, I've given it a bit of thought, and, uh, well, uh, I can see you've got a point. A bit late in the day, isn't it? So, I want you to take this. What is it? It's me check off the newspaper. What do you expect me to do with it? I don't know. Give it to charity, put it behind the bar, the next pensioners do. Just keep it away from me. Mrs. Give you the bums rush, has she? Uh, let's just say I've seen the error of me ways. I'm glad to hear it. All right. I'll make sure it goes to a good cause. Yeah, well. See ya. What's that? What's it look like? Well, I hope you're not thinking of trying to stick the blame on Cracker for it. And I hope you haven't turned up merely to gulp at proceedings across the way. And what if I have? It's a free country, innit? Weirdo. Get knotted. Look at the pair of yous. You're loving every minute of it. You twisted. Anyway. I haven't come here to ogle. No, I want to collar one of those fellas from the papers. I believe Steady Eddie over there touched for a few bob, just because he let him take a few photos. Imagine what I could make of a solemn story. What story? Listen, that house used to be my brother's old house, that. I used to dust there for months on end. And anyway, Sinbad is virtually my best mate. So that must be worth a couple of bob, mustn't it? Some mate. Listen, you bloodsucker. We, as residents, have agreed on a code of silence, and nobody is going to break it. All right. And what about him over there, Eddie Banks? Well, after a temporary aberration, I'm glad to say Eddie is back in the fold. Well, I must be the black sheep of the family then, must I? If you say one word... You what? <laughs> Cracker! Cracker! Hey! Sorry, you're not allowed to... Oh, can I get through and make that to my dog there? Hey, Cracker, come on, girl. Hey! Mommy, what have you got there, girl? Now? I'd have been a lot happier if you'd never got involved in the first place. Fair dues. I'm forgiven. If you make the dinner, yeah. You know. Is it uh, just the two of us? Yeah. Oh, our car's in town. And the other one's out with her new fella. All right. She's taken Becca with her this time. Well, what's wrong with that? You don't know this character from Adam. So? So? You're happy for our granddaughter to be out there with a total stranger. Sarah's not going to be knocking around with some psycho, is she? No, but I still like the chance to meet the bloke. Whether he's a nutter or the boy next door. Um. Well, actually... What? That's what he is. It's Mike Dixon. You what? 
Well, I found out myself the other day. And does our girl know his missus is knocking around with his best mate? Not yet, no. Well, they'll be made when he finds out. <sighs> She's doing this to wind him up. Oh, well, I don't know about that, love. So are you going to tell him or will I? I think it's best if we left him to it. <sighs> Mike Dixon and Sarah. That's all we bloody need. I, hang on, hang on, kids. Now, look, anyone who wants this dog's tail, they talk to me. James Corkill. Is it true you're a family friend? Not a friend exactly, no. no. You found the body. I couldn't Dublin City in its time has only ever received one large influx of refugees. And these were you So, what's going to happen now, then? I don't know, Rach. Are you going to give yourselves up? No. I was talking to my sister. No, not. Why? Because your mum and Beth don't deserve to end up in jail. That's why. And what about my dad? Well, he got what he deserved. What? Nothing. What did he say about my dad? Nothing, love. Just leave it, eh? Leave it? Rach! What? Please, just, just give us a chance to try and work out what to do for the best. Why don't you ask your boyfriend? He seems to have it all worked out. No, he hasn't. That's what this is all about, isn't it? What? You and him. No! Dirty lying cow. No, hey, you. No, it's all right. Well, don't talk to your mother like that. Oh, what? You'll kill me. No, but I might in a minute. Okay. It's you all this, isn't it? Yeah. Ordering us all around, getting into our house, yeah. ruining it all. Yeah. You made my mum do this, didn't you? Rachel! No. You told her to kill him, didn't you? Murder her! Rachel! Seems to be the problem. It's the people, Rachel. Oh, Rachel. Oh, sorry about this. Uh, how dare you run off when I'm talking to you? A bit of a domestic, huh? Yeah. Two sisters to be not each other like cat and dog. You two have been giving your mum and dad a hard time, huh? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, I don't know, huh? All teenagers. We'd have to be. I know the feeling. Got four of me own oh. to contend with. Oh, for you. Was well, that a scare sex that you take to do? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you sussed me. You're over on holiday? Kind of. And how are you feeling in Dublin? Oh, it's lovely, thanks. Well then, if those two behave themselves, I'm sure you'll have a fine time. Bye now. Bye. <laughs> That's it, girl. Come on. Say cheese. How are you feeling? I'm sorry, Rachel. I'm sorry for everything I've put you through, for everything that's happened. You must be really mixed up about all of this. I mean, so am I, but... It's... No, please, please. Look, hear me out just this once. There's something you've got to understand. What happened? It was between me and your dad, from start to finish. It started on the first day he punched me, and, and, it, and it ended on the day that I killed him. Yet, yeah, that's right, it was me. I stuck the knife in him. Nobody asked me to do it, nobody made me do it. I just did it. Now, I don't know if you can ever forgive me for that, but please, please don't blame Sinbad or Beth, because. They both love you very much, and, and this isn't their fault. This is all my doing. Mine and your dad's. Beverly, I really don't think you ought to be poking around in there. Oh, did you see the state of the poor things? What? Are those chickens stuck in those little boxes all day. I mean, you think someone would let them out for a bit of a fly around or something? I don't actually think chickens can fly. I'm not surprised, cooped up in there all day. Yes, I suppose they do look rather a sorry sight. You're not kidding. Always prefer them stuffed with a spot of gravy myself. Oh, don't say that, Dave. They might hear you. <laughs> sorry. Look, can we get back to the matter in hand? What? Manure. Oh, well, yes. Yeah. Come on, then. Bye, girls. Well, what do you think? 
Almost as good as anywhere. Well, come on then. First tonight's headlines. Hi, how are you? Uh, we're wondering if you had a couple of rooms for the night. Of course I do. Bloody hell. Aye. You give me the fright of my life there. I've got someone I want to introduce to you. Who? Ron. Me Kiev. There you go. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks. Take it back. No chance. Then I will. You will not. It's my chicken and it stays. The only way that thing is staying in this house is in there with a pack of the packed sorbets, Jaxi. Oh, take no notice of them, Kiev. I don't believe this. I'm shacked up with Dr. Doolittle. The evening papers will be due out now. I'll nip out in a minute and see what's hot off the presses. Okay. First, um, I'd like a hug off my favourite girl if she still wants one. And just think of all the money we'll save on eggs. Uh, do you think that's capable of laying any eggs? What do you mean? Well, I'm hardly David Bellamy, dear, but that looks like a cock to me. No, it's not. It's a chicken, the fella told me. No, I think you've flipped. I haven't flipped. I'm going to make a real go of this. I'm going to grow me veg, collect me eggs, and our Josh is going to be the best fed kid in Liverpool. And what's that face for? I mean, do you want him growing up eating crap all his life? Well, do you? OK, OK, you win. Now, can I just eat me butty in peace, please? And that's another thing. Since I've seen those poor hens in that barn today, I've decided we're going veggie. You what? All three of us, so you can forget about your bacon butty. Get the girls! What's up? The busies are downstairs. Get the girls! What is it? Come on. Well, what's happening? Fire practice. Come on. final day of our special Brookside week can be seen tomorrow at 8.30. And the Channel 4 video entitled Brookside The Women, featuring classic clips from the first 12 years of Brookside, together with brand new material, is out now in most video shops.